everybody, welcome to another episode of DeLorean Tech, and today I'm going to walk you through the process of replacing the ignition coil in the DeLorean. It's this component right here. And we're replacing this mainly for preventative maintenance. So these things are supposed to last about 100,000 miles, and this car has pretty close to that. However, this car is also pushing 40 years old, and... Uh, based on my research, I have not been able to find out if the original owner ever replaced this one. It doesn't look like they have. Uh, so I'm just going to make the assumption that it's never been replaced. So what we'll be doing is... So the mission coil has a, a strap right here. And we'll be unbolting that from the back wall here. And then we'll be disconnecting the negative and positive terminals right here and then pulling out the distributor wire and we'll pop the new one in and ready to go so everybody's car is different and in order to get the ignition coil off we're going to need to use a 13 millimeter combination wrench on that one I can't get a socket over that and then there's another one on the opposite side that we could probably get that one off of the socket. See if we can see that one in there. Anyway, it's it's down in there. It's kind of hard to tell with all the wiring in, but there's actually a straight shot and you can kind of see it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to want to do just unplug the distributor wire on the top. I'm just going to move that to the side and I'll just remove these with an 8 millimeter socket. safe place. You don't want to lose those. Looks like we're going to have to do some cleaning here. This is pretty dirty. I marked these wires here on the positive side or the number 15 side. There's a 15 side which is positive and a negative side which is marked with number 1. lost that one. Okay, so I'll take the positive terminal off. And then what we'll do is unbolt the, um, the strap here. So I think I can just use a combination wrench because This one over here on the right side, we're going to need to use a socket. It's really hard to see it in there, um, but I'm going to use a 13 millimeter socket. There's actually a straight shot right underneath all the bulkhead wires. If I could even see in there. Got it. It's always a good idea to mark your wires because I've heard of people wiring this thing up wrong after they've uh, removed it. 
So as you can finally see it now. Should be able to get it by hand now. I can get my hand in there. Be careful not to drop the bolt into the engine compartment. Okay, I got it loose. I'm just gonna lay the ignition coil right down here. And there's the bolt. And it's got two washers on there. So here it is, the old unit. Notice these old units, uh, this one has a lot of oil on top, which is a sign that it was probably going to end up failing if I didn't clean that stuff off. The coil is still good, but like I said, it's this is going to be preventative maintenance. So, wow, that doesn't look good at all. Yeah, so, I just... Got a brand new one from DMC. It's a new old stock, brand new, never used. Okay, so here's the old one versus the new one. And this one was probably about 50 bucks, I think. And the reason why I'm using the new old stock is mainly because um, the other, I guess the equivalent to this, uh, I've heard uh, is problematic, and the recommendation was to go with new old stock. Before I put it in though, I did notice that the strap's a little lower on this one, so I'm going to move it up to match this one right here so it's in the exact same position uh, as the original. And how you do that is there's a little adjustment screw back here. A screw here, and you've got a nut here, so just undo that. and move this up a little bit okay so I've got it pretty much dead even with the where the original strap is and this is the, um, the little adjustment screw it was pretty easy I didn't even need to hold that nut in place it just kind of un just kind of loosen this right here and then just slip this up a little bit uh, there's the part number 101052 was purchased at DMC California. So the other test uh, is checking the primary resistance across the coil. So you just connect your negative and your positive. So I'm getting about 0.6. That's actually not bad. 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Typical values are about 0.4 to 2. The workshop manual says one ohm, but um, I think 0 0.4, 0 0.5. It's on the lower end, but it's still um, a typical resistance for an ignition coil. When I checked the new one, I was getting about 0 0.8, 0 0.9. And when I checked the secondary, resistance um, I was definitely getting below 9,000 I was getting about 8,500 ohms here it's 9,370 ohms which is still fine typical values are uh, between 6,000 and 15,000 ohms so the ignition coil this ignition coil is still good but like I said before the reason why I'm replacing it is for preventative maintenance I don't want to wait until it goes bad. I'd rather just have a brand new one running in there and not have to worry about it. So, Before we put this in, uh, we're going to want to clean these terminals up a little bit. And there's a lot of oil on there. Just these two here. Distributor lead it doesn't look too dirty. It's fairly clean in there, but I'll probably do some cleaning in there as well a little bit. So you can actually remove these little connectors uh, right here. I would just take them off and clean them separately. They just came right out of there. So 
pretty easy. So I got this one cleaned up pretty good. I'll go ahead and put that one back on. There we go. And I'll go ahead and remove this one here. If I can, yeah. I'll go ahead and clean up that one. Okay, got that one cleaned up. Gonna go ahead and put that one back in. And there it is. So they look pretty good. So I'm gonna spray some electrical contact cleaner in here as well. So let's go ahead and get the new unit installed. So we'll start by connecting it to the actual vehicle itself first. Just tighten it up by hand first. Make sure you got both washers on. There we go. Okay, so what I did with the, uh, the one on the right here is I just kind of fished it through with a, uh, a socket and I was able to get it on there. So now all I do is just tighten these up. Just tighten it up with the socket. Again, there's a straight shot through here. Okay, so I got both of the bolts secured in there. And we're going to go ahead and make the terminal connections now. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and replace these terminals. This goes on the negative. This goes on the positive side. Tighten that up after I get both of them on. Okay. Go ahead and tighten those down. to make sure these terminals are proper angle. There we go. Make sure the connections are tight, nothing's loose, and everything's properly connected. So I'll probably use the old one as a spare since it does still work. Just clean it up and use it as a spare. Again, this is really just preventative maintenance. It wasn't like I needed to replace it, but it was getting there. Wire in there. There we go. 
and the installation is complete. Make sure everything's connected one last time. Everything's good to go. Okay, so we'll go ahead and start up the car. The car started up great. We'll find out after some driving if there uh, is a notable difference. It does sound a little different, like it's running a little bit better. It's better than the last time I uh, had it running. Lastly, to complete the installation, you want to just put your machine coil cover back on. Okay guys, that's the ignition coil replacement. Thanks for watching.